We must stand up and protest at every city council and county commissioner meeting, at every planning board, and, every, and attend these consensus meetings. Don't let them get away with that on their own. Fight the creation of non-elected councils, commissions, or boards because they can and they will be used as a weapon against your ability to deal and reason with local elected government. Above all, refuse federal or state money or new sustainable programs and get rid of the old ones. And if ICLE and the American Planning Association are running things in your town, throw them out. Stop payment of dues, disband anything that they have built, and start looking for some high-grade tar and feathers. <laughs> and if your elected representatives continue to ignore you while playing footsie with those leading this tyranny, then you must force them out of office. Your survival depends on it. Nameless, faceless bureaucrats wielding power in the back rooms, untouchable and unseen, is not freedom. The sustainableists now haunt the upper levels of the federal government, our state houses, and our city council chambers. In these very dangerous times, it is easy to despair over our nation's future. They have achieved many of their goals, but they have not yet won. Their whole agenda is built on a house of cards that stands only when you are ignorant and compliant. And their arrogance and their impatience to force the policy into place is resulting in a stir of the American people. We are beginning to move the rock of freedom uphill. We are on the threshold of great change because the word is quickly spreading about Agenda 21. After 19 years of issuing warnings about Agenda 21, finally, opposition is being heard. In the past 18 months, the following communities have taken official action to revoke their contracts with ICLE, starting with Carroll County, Maryland, then Amador County, California, then Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, then Edmond, Oklahoma, then Las Cruces, New Mexico, then Spartanburg, South Carolina, then Albemarle County, Virginia, the home of Thomas Jefferson, then Lexington, Virginia. We can now add Carver, Massachusetts, Pinellas County, Florida, Garland, Texas, Sarasota, Florida, Florida County, Florida, Abington, Virginia, Clayland County, Washington, and Chatham County, North Carolina, Monmouth County and Somerset County, New Jersey, and most recently, College Station, Texas, the home of Texas A&M. And we can add to that, Irvine, Texas. Irvin? Irvin? I'm sorry. There's no G on it. Anyway, Irving, Texas. All have voted to rescind their memberships in Italy. In fact, we believe at least 60 communities have pulled out of Italy since January 2011, with only 17 new communities becoming members. That is a net reduction of 43 communities, and I don't think we're counting for all of this. Every day I hear another message. Italy itself now only lists 550 where it used to have 650. And I get reports every day of major battles being fought by activists against Agenda 21 policies. Just last week, I received an excited email from activists in York County, South Carolina, that their county council had voted 4 to 3 to abolish their already prepared 500 page unified development ordinance that Ickley had helped write. All of these communities have taken the first step in ending Agenda 21 in their community, but it is only a first step. Getting rid of Ickley means you shot a, fired a shot across their bow. All of the policies are still there, all of the agenda is still there, and you need to take it down step by step. But it is a start, and it gets better. In Florida, the state legislature has passed and the government, governor has signed legislation to repeal smart growth legislation. That means that now counties are free from state mandates. They can still do it if they want to, but they're not mandated to do it. This is landmark legislation. In New Hampshire, two bills are before the legislature. One prohibits any state or local government entity to give money to Ickley. Essentially, it bans Ickley. I got a, uh, an email from the legislator who introduced that just two days ago, and she said, 
that it is now passed the House of Representatives in, in uh, New Hampshire and it's on the way to the Senate. The other bill before the New Hampshire legislature prohibits state and local government agents from entering private property without the written permission of the property owner. Yeah. Private, I'll say it again. Prohibits state and local agents from entering private property without the written permission of the property owner. Now, Senator Rand Paul has introduced a bill, S-2122, designed to rein in the power of the EPA and the uh, Army Corps of Engineers. And in that bill, he has the exact same language that federal agents cannot enter private property without the written permission of the private property owner. <laughs> Protection of private property is the key to stopping enforcement of Agenda 21. In April, both houses of the state legislature of Tennessee passed an anti-Agenda 21 resolution. It's not binding, but it's a statement nonetheless. Now, I understand the governor, the Republican governor of Tennessee, refused to sign that resolution. Pressure has got to be put on him to, to show that he is standing against the will of the people. But still, the legislature went through the process. That means the legislature is aware, and that is a statement that we cannot deny. Legislators in the state of Wisconsin are working on a bill similar to Florida's to free counties of mandatory comprehensive development plans. The uh, le legislator, who, she introduced a bill earlier that uh, was not good enough, and, and the bill died. She has agreed to work with us so that she gets the proper language this time. And finally, on January 13th of this year, the Republican National Committee unanimously passed a resolution entitled Exposing United Nations Agenda 21. tell you, that is helping in a big way to bring formerly reluctant Republicans into our fight. Revolution against sustainable development is taking place in every corner of this nation. In a panic, Italy, created by the United Nations, is now rushing to cleanse its website of any mention of the United Nations. The American Planning Associates kind of gone the way of Obama's birth certificate, I guess. <laughs> the American Planning Association has organized a boot camp to train its people how to counter our efforts. What I love about this, I sit at home every once in a while and I just get a smile on my face. We are this ragtag little band that has no money, has no political power, supposedly. And these guys have massive war chests and massive influence, and they are panicked by what we're doing, and they're changing their whole game plan because of us, and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> and an APA, an APA, American Planning Association memo says, quote, given the heightened scrutiny of planners by some members of the public, what is said or not said is especially important to building support for planning. What is not said? Don't tell them this. So, they have dropped the main words of Agenda 21 and are replacing them with a George Orwell type newspeak designed to lull you to sleep. And here are a few of the words they are now telling their people to no longer use because it makes us see red. Direct quote. <laughs> These words, facilitate regionalism, smart growth, stakeholders, sustainability, government of councils, eminent domain, and mixed-use development. It's just, just a very few of the words that they, they are not going to use anymore. And this is what I love. They caution their people, quote, avoid talking about or linking plans and planning with regulatory matters. My friends, Planning is nothing but regulatory matters. Of course, they aren't changing any of the words, or any of the policies, they're just changing the words. And this just in. You all know that next month, there is, they've been planning for a couple of years to put together Rio Plus 20, the celebration of the 20-year anniversary of the creation of Agenda 21. And they've had big plans to put together a treaty that this time will make it law, and all the world leaders will come there and sign this document. 
This is the purpose of Rio Plus 20. Well, this just in. News leaking from behind the closed doors of the UN Preparatory Committee for Rio Plus 20, the group responsible for providing the finished global plan of action, which has been titled, are you ready? The title of it is, The Future That We Want. We should buy them rattles. You know, little babies. This document is in big trouble. For weeks, they have failed to reach consensus on the final agenda that the world leaders are supposed to approve and adopt. Apparently, it's not the future we all want. In short, the Rio Plus 20 conference hasn't even convened, and already it's in trouble. Who said world domination was easy? Well, my friends, we obviously have a very long way to go. I have no illusions about that. But, for the first time since I started down the road to expose Agenda 21, I believe if we stay vigilant and vigorous, if we refuse to hang our heads in despair, we will succeed in crushing it. You know, recently I watched the, the film Robin Hood, the, uh, the latest one starring Russell Crowe. And as I watched it, I was struck by the similarities between the people of England in the 13th century and the forces of tyranny that we face today in America. It was a time of serfs who had no rights, no property, and only poverty in their future. It was a time when the king owned everything from land to livestock. And it was a time when tax collectors could literally confiscate everything you had in the name of the king, leaving you with virtually nothing. In 13th century England, the people attempted to rise up and free themselves of the shackles of the king's government. All they wanted was the ability to benefit from the fruits of their own labor. What a concept. The people knew what they had to do if ever they were going to be free. The slogan under which they organized was, Rise and rise again until lambs become lions. Today, as we face an ever-growing tyranny by a Congress and a President, as well as elected officials at every level, who lie to you and deny their actions that you can plainly see and ignore you, Americans, for the first time in our history, face the same evil those Englishmen faced so long ago. But in their desperation to complete their agenda, they have pushed too far, too fast, and they have exposed themselves. For the first time, the average, pe average people can see the raw power grab, and it's leading to their undoing. And so, for the first time that I can remember in my long fight for freedom, we are winning battles. We've established a beachhead. We are on Utah Beach on D-Day, and we're moving inland. Do you know how long it took the forces of freedom to destroy the invincible Nazi juggernaut once we had established that beachhead? Less than a year. Our enemies are terrified of us because deep down they know their plans are evil and doomed for failure. Their entire plan is a lie built on a house of cards. And like global, the lie of global warming, it can and it will crash overnight. Their only hope is that we are ignorant, pliable, and afraid to stand and fight. So it's time to stop accepting defeat. Stop looking down at our shoes in despair. Believe in the ideals of freedom because they're right. Now is our time. Rise and rise again until lambs become lions. Thank you very much.